Okay, so in this video we're going to show you how to do some simple statistical operations using CODAP. And uh, I've got some sample questions that you might ask students here. Uh, and we'll go through in this data set of magazines, which includes information about the type of the name of the magazine, the price, the total number of pages in each magazine, how many ad pages there are in each magazine, and the type of magazine that it is. So uh, first let's create a graph to show what type of magazine is most popular. And creating the graph is as easy as clicking the graph icon. You can see that you get a random uh, selection of the data. And to make that a little more specific, we can drag something to the vertical or the horizontal axis. I'm going to take the type and drag it to the horizontal axis. And you can see there that it makes a uh, bar slash dot plot uh, of the data and it's already nice and arranged. If we wanted to arrange this in a different way we could do that by just dragging the attributes from one side to another because it's categorical. And so simply we've uh, pointed out here that uh, definitely health and fashion is the most popular magazine followed by sports and entertainment, home and garden, business and news, and science and technology in the end. And if we want to actually see how much data is in each type, we can just click on the graph and from there choose count uh, or percent if we really want. Uh, that'll show the count and the percent. And then students could actually type their response right in the text box. We can uh, certainly give it a title. And then when, once we're done with that graph, we can minimize it so that it is out of the way. Now we want to create some graphs of each of the numerical attributes and plot the mean, median, and standard deviation on each graph. So these are going to be single variable graphs. So we have three numerical attributes. So we're going to make three graphs and drag to the horizontal attribute, to the horizontal axis, each one. And adding the mean, median, and standard deviation is quite simple. We can just choose the ruler, choose mean, median, standard deviation, and do that for each one. And so hovering over each one, you can see that the mean and the median are so close here that uh, they are right on top of each other. Um, whereas here in the ad pages, they are a little bit further from each other, so we can distinguish them easier. And then uh, hovering over the uh, standard deviation line, we get the actual value for the standard deviation in this case. So we can summarize that. And we're asked to describe whether the data is skewed to the right, left, or symmetrical. Um, and you can see that for each set, it's mostly symmetrical with a slight skewing to the right. And one way that you can tell it's skewed to the right is that in each case, uh, the mean is to the right of the median. So I'll give these some titles. And we can minimize these graphs now too, so that since we are done with them, they are out of the way. Now we're asked to create a box plot for the ad pages. Uh, for each type of magazine and uh, are there outliers. So even though we have an ad pages um, here, I'm going to make a new one and we're going to drag ad pages there as we did before and we can choose box plot and uh, you can see the box plot appear there but we want this to be distinguished among the different types of magazines so we can drag the type of magazine to the vertical axis and now actually see the individual box plots for each type of magazine. And we're asked whether or not there are outliers. You can see that for health and fashion, there are four outliers. Uh, seems like most of them come from InStyle magazine. What's the other one there? And one from Vanity Fair. Uh, in sports and entertainment, there is one outlier, Flex Mag, and there are no other outliers. So the outliers are indicated by these plus points here, and uh, 
by clicking on them, we can get information about each individual one in the table if we want to get, to get that. And because there are no outliers here, we don't see any outliers. So outliers are defined by the fact that these points are more than 1.5 the width of the box away from the edge of that box, away from that quartile. So there's our outliers graph. I'm going to minimize that as well. Put that to the side so we can get to it another time if we want. And the last thing we're asked is create a scatter plot comparing ad pages to total pages. Is there a relationship? So again, we're going to make a graph. We get the data scattered about. We want a scatter plot. We want to compare ad pages to total pages. So we have to think about which of those two will be the dependent and which will be the independent variable. Likely, the you could argue that the number of total pages is governed by how many ad pages there are because that's what pays for the paper or, or the magazine. Or you could say that uh, the number of total pages governs the number of ad pages. And so this is certainly up to debate. Uh, we're going to put the number of total pages down as the independent variable and then the number of ad pages that depends on the total pages. And you can see it's a fairly linear relationship. Uh, now we probably want a line of best fit and you can choose to do that right away but I'm going to actually do it informally at first. Um, we're going to put a movable line on here. So I can take this movable line and I can drag it to where I think the line of best fit is going to be. And that I'm guessing is pretty good, but I can actually get a better guess by showing the squares of the residuals. And you can see that this is uh, about 153,000. As I drag this, I can see I want that to be as minimum as possible. And so if I drag it one way, that is certainly getting bigger. If I drag it the other way, it's getting a little bit smaller. Um, 135,000, Oh, back up to 135. So there's 134 there. Um, maybe I can drag it a little bit. 133, got down to 133-ish. So that's my guess as the line of best fit. Uh, of course, it's much easier to, to choose the least squares line, but it's a little bit more intuitive if you have students try to guess the line of best fit before the computer actually tells them that much. And you can see that I'm not that far off in my prediction from what the line of best fit is. So there's definitely a relationship. Um, I'm going to get rid of this movable line now and just keep the least squares line there. And you can see that the R squared value is 0.79, so that the correlation is somewhere in the 0.8-ish uh, range, almost 0.9. So that's a strong correlation. And we have actually an equation here, a linear equation that we can use to represent the, the relationship. Of course, we can give this the title. And that is a relatively simple way to look at some of the initial features of working with CODAP and using some basic statistical calculations and graphs for doing some analysis.